was any of it true? Gazing at me starry eyed, and I don't even want you, but I just want to know. I'm not just the smallest you ever had. You said by someone. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Nina. If you are new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you, and if you're not new, thanks for coming back. It has been quite a while since I've done a guitar tutorial, but I know there has been quite a few of you commenting, asking me to do some guitar content again. I have already done a few other songs from Tortured Poets, so I will link those down below. If you guys want to check out any of my other guitar tutorials, I have organized them into playlists for every single Taylor Swift album. Album, so you can go check that out. Some of you already know this, but if you didn't know, I launched a Patreon channel a few months ago and I have been teaching a ton of guitar tutorials over there every single week. I do live stream lessons, I post play alongs, tabs every single week, so if you're wanting more guitar content, that's where you're gonna find it. If you are not a guitar player but you are interested in learning, I have a ton of beginner tutorials, tips, videos, like all that kind of stuff on my channel already and Taylor Swift has some of the easiest beginner guitar songs so it would be a great place for you to start but today we're gonna be learning the smallest man who ever lived and I think this one is so fun acoustically and pretty easy so yeah let's get into it okay so for this song we're gonna capo it on the third fret so that we can play beginner easy chords as far as the chords that we're gonna be using I have two different variations I'm gonna show you guys there's a very basic way of playing this song if you just want to stick with your basic chords But there's a few other chord variations that you can try to kind of challenge yourself Add something a little bit extra to this song just because sometimes when the song has super simple chords You kind of want to add a little flair to it. So our basic chords are going to be G C at 9 D and E minor or E minor 7. So that's going to be the basic chords if you just want to play the easiest ones. But there are a few other variations which are not technically hard. I would say there's only one chord that might be a little bit challenging, but these are chords that I think just fit really well with the song um, at different points. So we'll go through it. We've got G7. Which is a little bit of a jazzy chord and then we've got C7 again same kind of thing and then regular E minor which is not difficult it's just the basic E minor the one chord I think that's gonna be a little bit challenging is this chord D add 4 which is basically you're playing the same chord shape as C the regular basic C chord you're just gonna move it up two frets to starting on the third fret and it gives you this like really suspended, pretty sounding D. So if you're not familiar with how guitar chords kind of work is that there's not just one way to play a chord. There are many different chord shapes that you can use up and down the frets that make the same sound essentially. So we've got regular D. And then we've got this D. So you can see they kind of, they sound the same, they just have different undertones to it, I guess. Anyways, you can play this chord in place of D anywhere. It just depends on the song and if it kind of goes with the vibe of the song. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but you kind of get the idea here. For example, in a lot of Taylor Swift songs, when she has the chord progression G, F, C, A minor, I usually use G sus. <laughs> I think that sounds better with the chord progression and the sound of the song and that's what she plays instead of playing like C G F 
the G sus kind of adds something a little bit extra to it and it kind of goes with the sound of the song. So that's basically what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna show you both ways. So first let's go over the basic chords and then I'll kind of show you where you can switch things up if you would like to. I always just like to give you guys options to just kind of choose your own adventure. Learn new things, of course. So for the verses we have G, C, D for the first four lines and then we have E minor, C, D towards the end of the verse here. So so G and C are going to be splitting the measure and then D is getting the full measure of the strumming. And so for our strumming pattern, starting with G, I'm just going to be playing the basic chords. So regular G, you're going to do down, up, down, up. So for G, down, up, down, up. And then you're going to switch to C and do the second half of the strumming pattern and it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, down, up. So again, G, down, up, down, up. Switch to C at 9. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And then when you get to D, you're going to do the full strumming pattern. So it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And you're going to do that four times in a row for this first part of the verse. So starting at the top, we've got G, down, up, down, up, C, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, D, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. So all together, let's play through it a couple times. We've got G, one, two, three, four. Let's do a little demo with the words for this first part. One, two. Was any of it true? Gazing at me, sorry, I. And your Jehovah's Witness And then for the next two lines, you're going to do E minor, C, D instead of G, C, D. So you're going to do E minor, C, D twice, and then you're going to go back to G, C, D, and then end it with E minor, C, D. Going to E minor, you're going to play it exactly how you would with G. So down, up, down, up, switch to C, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, and then to D. minor, C, D, and then go back to G, C, D, now you know what it feels like, and then it goes straight into the chorus. For the chorus, you're going to do E minor, C, D, just like we were doing in the verse, in the second half of the verse. So again, we've got E minor, C, D, E minor, C, D. You're going to do that four times for this chorus and then you're going straight into verse two which is going to be the same thing as verse one so let's play from the end of the first verse into the chorus one two three now you know what
we're trying our best here. If you can't go low, go high, as always. But anyway, so that's the chorus, and then it goes straight into verse two. And the only difference about verse two is that at the second half, you're gonna stick with E minor instead of having that one line that switches to G. Same exact strumming and everything. Once your queen had come You treat her like an also ran You didn't measure up In any measure of a man And on the second chorus you were going to do C, G, D instead of E minor. So C, G, D. So C and G are splitting the measure and then you're playing D for a full measure. So. I don't even want you to the bridge which is the best part of the entire song so at the end of that second chorus you can either take just that one measure and then jump straight into the bridge or you can take an extra measure of the strumming pattern to build it up to the bridge up to you and then when we get to the bridge is where we're gonna switch things up a little bit the strumming is going to be the same but the chord progression is gonna be G E minor D C and that is gonna take you out through the bridge and the outro end of the song here. And so each chord is going to get a full strumming pattern here. So one measure for every chord. We got G, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And that's E minor. And then to D. So I would say like the verses in the chorus is where you're going to be able to add in these different chord variations, but for the bridge and the outro, I really do like to stick to this specific chord progression and variation of these chords. And so if you are deciding to take an extra measure at the end of the second chorus, my recommendation is that you play through the strumming pattern once. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And then do four down strums as like a build up. So one, two, three, four. And then you kind of do a strumming cut. Sent by someone. I just feel like that's so good. Um, so again, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 down. Yeah. So let's play through from the end of the chorus and then I'll sing part of the bridge for you guys so you can kind of get a good idea. So, <clears throat> one, two, three, four. A message to the smallest
So I would say this bridge is difficult to figure out if you should do the lower or the higher octave. Um, my alto queens, this one is for you. You would definitely thrive with this song, specifically the bridge. I do know when she sings it live that when she hits the second half of the bridge, she goes up the octave. So if you want to sing the entire thing in the upper octave, go for it. But anyways, that's the whole bridge. And then at the very end, leading into the outro, it like comes down a bit. So this part where she goes, you kicked out the stage lights, but you're still So you can transition into quieter strumming, or you could even do single strumming for the end here. Plain sight, but you are what you did. I'll forget you now, never forget. Smallest man who ever lived. And that's it. So that's the whole song with the basic chords. I'm going to show you now the different chord variations that you can insert into the song um, wherever you would like to. But essentially, I like to play these chords for the first half of the song. And then when we get into the second chorus is when I will switch into C9, those chords. So we've got G7. So it's just got this like jazzy kind of open chord. And then we've got C7, which means you just move down your fingers one string each. And then we've got this chord, which is a C shape, and you move it up to the third fret. And this is D add four. And I really just love the sound of this and it, I feel like it fits with the song so much. I actually originally learned this chord because Gracie Abrams plays it a lot in her songs if she is doing a chord progression that has a lot of chords that are like G7 and C7 and E minor. It just fits really well with the rest of these chords. So anyways, that's what it sounds like. There's no barring of any chords. What I kind of like to do though is you see my thumb I'm just lightly touching the sixth string so if I'm strumming you can't hear it it kind of mutes it so that's optional here but you want to make sure you're not playing that sixth string because it'll mess up the sound of the chord so what I just like to do sometimes is if the sixth string is not being played I like to mute it with my thumb by just touching it you don't have to press down on it or anything you just have to touch it it's gonna sound like this and the strumming is going to be the same exact strumming that we were doing. The only thing that's changing is the variation of the chord. And what I did with the tab is that I just wrote the basic chord down on the tab. And I'm just going to let you guys decide which version you guys want to play. Just so that it's not too confusing here. So it's going to sound like this. We've got G7. Down. Up. Down. Up. C7. Up. Down. Up. Down. Down. Up. And then you move up. To D add four. So it's gonna sound like this. Was any of it true? Gazing at me so go to E minor, if I'm playing this chord progression, I like to just use the regular E minor, not E minor 7. Going into our chorus, it's going to sound like this, regular E minor. And I don't even want you So 
Anyways, that's just something extra I wanted to show you guys just in case you liked that version better. So if you guys want to check out the full guitar tab that I wrote for this, the link to that will be down below. You can download it as a PDF. Um, it has all the chord charts and strumming and everything that you need. And if you guys want to practice and play along with me, I have posted the full play along on my Patreon channel. If you are interested in checking it out, I will link that down below as well. I don't want to over explain why I decided to move a lot of my music content to Patreon, but essentially on YouTube, a lot of Taylor Swift's songs get copyrighted and therefore I'm not able to have any income from a lot of my music videos, which is why I kind of needed to find a sustainable way to continue to play guitar with you guys. I hope you understand. There are still so, so many free guitar tutorials on my channel. I have taught the majority of Taylor Swift songs on YouTube already, but thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.